This video is an introduction to computer-aided Smith charts. The Smith chart is used to analyze electrical circuits containing capacitors, inductors, resistors, and transmission lines. I am using a program called SimSmith. SimSmith allows you to draw circuits and provides real-time analysis of the circuit. It also allows you to modify the values of the various circuit elements and shows you again in real time the effect of any changes. In this video, I'll show how a circuit can be created and tuned to solve a common design problem, specifically an impedance match at a chosen frequency. Problems of this kind are often found in antenna and electrical circuit design. Before we get started, let's take a quick tour around the SimSmith screen. On the left hand side, there are three menus. The lower one is a menu of circuit elements we can add to our circuit. The upper menu is called the tuning menu, which allows us to change the values of the circuit elements. The middle menu is called the sweep menu, but we will not be using that in this session. Along the top of the screen is the circuit being analyzed. On the right hand side is the Smith chart itself. The Smith chart is a special form of graph which we can use to plot complex impedances. When you click on a space inside the graph, SimSmith will report the impedance at that point. Down here on the right hand side, notice that when I click the center of the chart, SimSmith reports an impedance of 50 ohms with zero reactance, or close to zero. On the left hand side of the chart, impedances are lower. Here, 1, 2, 3 ohms. And on the right hand side of the chart, impedances are higher. Here, 1K, 2K. Above the center of the chart, impedances have reactances which are positive. Down here, reactance, 44. And below the center of the chart, reactances are negative. Here, a minus 49. So let's get started. Suppose we would like to design a circuit which will match a 75 ohm load to a 50 ohm generator. Most designs start by specifying the impedances. Here, the generator has already been set to 50 ohms. And let's set our frequency to be, say, 10 megahertz, which I do by clicking on the parameter and simply typing what I want. Notice that when I started typing, this field turned pink, and when I hit the return key, it will turn back to white. We also need to set the load impedance. We said 75 ohms, and there we have it. Examining the Smith chart, we can now see a dot at the 75 ohm impedance mark. SimSmith draws a dot at the impedance of the load and an X at the impedance as seen by the generator. Since the generator is connected directly to the load, the X and the dot are in the same place on the Smith chart. The goal of our circuit will be to move the X to the center of the Smith chart. A typical solution to this problem is to use what's called an L network. In SimSmith, a circuit is drawn using the familiar drag and drop paradigm. First, we will add a shunt capacitor which I click and drag up to the circuit. We can alter the value of the capacitor by selecting the field and using the tune buttons in the tuning menu. Clicking on the parameter and then using the tune button. Notice that as I make the value larger, the arc gets longer. And if I make the value smaller, the arc gets shorter. Let's adjust the value of our capacitor so that the X lands on this blue arc which is passing through the center of the Smith chart. To complete the L network, I need to add an inductor which will cancel out the reactance which was introduced by the capacitor. To do so, I merely click on the inductor and drag it up to the circuit. 
Notice that adding the inductor moved to the x upwards. Now we need to tune the inductor value so that the x lands in the middle of the chart. In order to explore the utility of the Smith chart a little more, let's look at some other ways we might do this simple job of matching. The L network can be implemented in other ways. I can replace the capacitor with an inductor, an inductor with a capacitor. So I can take out my shunt capacitor and put in a shunt inductor, and take out my series inductor and put in a series capacitor. And again, I can tune the values. Here I'm going to tune it so that this first red arc lands on that circle but goes through the center. And here I'll affect the value of the capacitor to move the X up. This constant clicking on the tune buttons can be a little tiresome. To simplify rough tuning, SimSmith allows you to click and drag the ends of arcs on the Smith chart itself. Thus, to change the length of the arc of the inductor, I can use the right mouse button and click on the end of the arc and drag it down. Or up. Then I can click on the end of the capacitor arc and move it up and down to the center. SimSmith will even allow you to change two arcs at the same time. Watch what happens if I click and drag the end of the capacitor arc. Notice that SimSmith is updating the values of the capacitor and inductor so that the X is following my mouse movements. Inductors and capacitors can actually be implemented in another way, by using a transmission line stub. In general, a transmission line stub which is shorted acts like an inductor, and a transmission line stub which is open acts as a capacitor. I can get rid of my inductor and use a shunt shorted transmission line, and I can get rid of my series capacitor and add an open transmission line stub. And again, using the right mouse button, I can drag the match to the center. Notice that as I do so, SimSmith is affecting the length of these transmission line stubs. Impedance matching can be done in other ways. Probably the most popular way is to use what is called a quarter wave matching section. This technique uses a one quarter wave long section of transmission line. Let me get rid of my stubs and add a piece of transmission line. And I want it to be a quarter wave long, which is 90 degrees. Notice that the X, again, has moved in an arc. This time, however, the arc is part of a circle whose center is at the characteristic impedance of the transmission line. I can adjust the characteristic impedance of the line by clicking on the parameter, Z0, and using the tuning buttons. If I hold the button down, SimSmith will auto-repeat. And there's our match. Note that SimSmith will not allow you to drag tune the impedance of a transmission line. Only the length can be adjusted using this drag tuning. Another way transmission lines can be used to achieve a match is to use what's called the 1 12th wave solution. In this technique, two pieces of transmission line are used, both of which are approximately 1 12th of a wave long. Let me add a second section and set them both to be 1 12th long which is 30 degrees. Now I need to set the impedances of the line. Using this technique, 
one sets the impedance of the first line to be the impedance of the generator, which would be 50 ohms, which is already set at. And the second section has an impedance which is set to be the same as the load. So I can set this to 75. Here the match is already pretty good. In this video, we have explored the use of computer-aided Smith charts. Using the example of a simple impedance matching at a single frequency, we have seen how we can create a circuit and adjust various circuit element values. Using different circuits, we have seen how to transform one impedance into another. Other tutorials show what happens as we vary the frequency. Please note that the various tutorials were developed at different stages in SimSmith's development. This tutorial is a remake of the original and uses version 7.3. Most videos were made with substantially older versions. While the circuit techniques presented in those videos are useful, the user interface has changed significantly. Please contact me concerning any bugs and to make feature requests. As always, thanks for watching.